things I really want to talk about All before right. we wrap up. One of them is Stonehenge, which maybe is the funniest thing. Um, just laugh out loud funny. Yeah. In this movie, they decide that like this big push that they're going to have to make the stage show just over the top awesome is that they're going to have a model of Stonehenge. <laughs> And they draw it on a napkin, and they give it to a fabricator, which is played by Angelica Houston. And, you know, they, they want her to make this Stonehenge for them. So she brings in the Stonehenge, and Ian keeps thinking it's a replica, because it's about a foot and a half tall. Um, but it's because they accidentally put 18 inches on the napkin instead of 18 feet. And <laughs> she's like... <laughs> This is the piece, you know, I don't know why I keep saying a replica. This is the piece. And at this point, they're kind of in a situation where they're in financial trouble. They can't afford to, like, go back and fix this. So, without really telling the band, uh, Ian just continues on with this 18-inch <laughs> stone edge. So they're doing like this really, you know, meaty song where it's like, you know, so profound and all this. And I love that because that's something really funny about some of these types of bands at that time. Sure. Is that they think that they're like really like heavily like laying down this info on you. The majestic troubadour. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think of that one Thin Lizzy song where he's talking about the friendly ranger the friendly ranger at clontorf castle yeah and or clontarf oh thank you and he does like this whole spoken word thing at the beginning like it's so profound and then so they're doing this and then this tiny little stonehenge model comes down and these um little people dressed like leprechauns come out and start dancing around it <laughs> And the guys are on stage while this is happening, and no one has ever been more bullshit yeah. than they are. Yeah. They're so BS about it, and they just can't deal. And they're yelling about it, like, after the show. And, yeah, that's, it's, I don't know exactly what David says, but he's just like, yeah, it was in danger of being trampled, you know, so, by dwarves, he says that, you know, Stonehenge isn't really that majestic when it's in danger of being trampled by small people. So that was very, very funny. Well, and it's also just one of those things, again, when you're like this artist and you want to be uncompromising and you want to have this powerful statement and things just don't go no. your way at all. And it's just, it's so undercutting in like such a funny way. <laughs> it makes you, it makes you seem like a fool. It makes yeah. you just seem like an absolute fool up there. And these guys, particularly in that song, wanted to be like these prophets of doom. You yeah, know, like they're like these... really trying to show you how it is. It's like the ancient druids yeah. and all this kind of stuff. We and are the prophets. It's so funny when that happens. So I love that part. The other part that I felt like we needed to mention is the drummers. Please, let's <laughs> mention it. So one of like their whole things in this is that they have like a history of cursed drummers. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stumpy Peeps. Great name, great was name. Was their first drummer that was played by Ed Begley. Yep. Uh, and I don't remember, was he the one that died in a tragic gardening accident? Oh, or was he the one that spontaneously combusted? Oh, uh, you got me. You I got don't me. remember, but they die in these ridiculous ways i laugh through that part so much that it's hard for me like to really be specific with the <laughs> lines i just remember seeing them sitting there at the table yeah and it's just it's it's nonsense and like mckeon like almost loses it and he manages to save it because it's <laughs> so funny i mean i don't know how these guys couldn't laugh it's so good i actually think as much as i love stonehenge i think that the part where they're explaining the deaths of the drummers is my favorite because it, there's a part where they're talking about the tragic gardening accident and I think that's the part they're talking about 
and <laughs> Christopher Guest says something like, best left alone, really. <laughs> it's like, you don't really want to look into that too much. <laughs> and it's just said in such like a low key way that it just kills me. It's hilarious. Yeah, I mean, the deaths are spontaneous combustion, which apparently they're telling you happens all the time and just leaves a little grease spot on the drum stool. <laughs> Someone died in a tragic, <laughs> a tragic gardening accident. And another one <laughs> was that someone choked on vomit. Oh. And you're like, okay, well, I mean, that really happened, so that's not funny. And then they were like, but but then they weren't really sure whose vomit it was. <laughs> oh, man. And then at the end of this movie, you know, after they've gone through all the stuff and things finally, you know, are starting to look up because Nigel comes back to the band and, you know, they're going to go tour in Japan. Um their drummer throughout the movie is this Mick Shrimpton and uh, played by R.J. Parnell or Rick Parnell and uh, he blows up and they have another spontaneously combusted drummer and then they get this guy Joe Mama Besser becomes their drummer in Japan so uh, it's great and I think that would be so fun to just sit around and think of all the, you know, creative ways that your drummer could have died. That yeah. would have been my favorite part of the improv. That would have been like a great board game. Like you could have really, <laughs> you could have marketed that. How did your drummer die? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that could be a car game for us. Like, Ooh. you know, one day when we're taking a ride and we're just in the car bored, we could just start thinking of other ways that a drummer of Spinal Tap could have died. He threw himself into a juicer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>